Hello guys, welcome to the channel. In this particular video, we are going to talk about the problem copy set bits in range. So the problem is asked by companies like Disho and Adobe. Starting with the problem statement, so it says that you are given two numbers x and y and a range from L to R where L and R both lies in the interval from 1 to 31. Your task is to first copy the set bits of y in the range from L to R in x and then return this modified x. Okay, so one note is given here and it says that the range count will be from right to left direction and start from 1. Okay, let me explain all this stuff using the given example. So the example says that we have the value of x equals to 44 and we have the value of y equals to 3. We're writing the binary representation of the number so 44 will be like uh, 0 0 1 1 then 0 1 and 3 will be 1 1 and then all are 0 right so this is the binary form of the numbers and now it says that you have a range and you have to copy the set bits of y uh, in x in the range from l to r okay so the range start from 1 and then end at 5 right and we have to move from right to left so i'll start from let me change the color first i'll start from this point this is the starting point one and then i have to move to the left direction and this is going to be five right this is how i have to move okay so the set bits in this particular uh, range is going to be these two and now as i have two set bits so i have to copy these set bits to the number x right and when I do so, then I will have the resultant number as 1, 0, 1, 1 and then 1, 1, right? These two are the modified bits. So, at last, all I need to do is I need to convert this particular number back to the decimal form. And when I do so, then I will get the number uh, 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1. This is going to give me 47, right? So, 47 is going to be the output for this particular example. So you can see the output here. Now I hope you have understood the problem statement. So let's talk about the solution now. Okay, so here I have written one example and so this is the same example as given in the problem statement and the first approach that, that will come to your mind is quite similar to the one I have explained here, right? So first of all, we need to convert the number into the binary form. Then we have to copy the bits in the range and then we have to convert the number back to decimal form. Let me write these steps. So the first is convert uh, x and y to binary form. Right? This is the first step. And the second step is copy set bits. Set bits in range uh, L to R. This is the second step. And the third step is convert uh, modified x x to decimal form again right decimal form so these are the three steps that I need to follow and quickly showing you the code so here is the code you can see the code here and the first step is here we are converting the uh, numbers into their binary representation and then we are starting a loop uh, in order to copy the bits right okay so what is this what I'm doing here you can see here I'm doing some change in the intervals right let me show you why so okay so you can see here that the intervals start from 1 right and we move from right to left so this position is 1 but actually when we talk about an array so the indexing start from this position 0 so this means that if this position is 0 then this position will be n minus i right you can see here this position will be n minus i and what is n here and is the size of uh, the array and when we talk about binary representation then we can have at most 32 bits so that's why i have taken the size as 32 this is for the 32 bit representation of the numbers so i'll write 32 minus n right similarly for right like for this is r right for this i'll write 32 minus r and now one thing to notice is as I uh, I move from right right to uh, like left to right so now this will become my starting point so this is my starting point and this is my ending point right 
so this is what i'm doing here you can see here i'm doing just a little bit of modifications so that i can uh, traverse the range right and now i'm checking if the given bit of the binary y is equal to 1 if the bit is equal to 1 then i'll simply copy the bits in x right so this is the main operation that i'm performing and after this this function is going to give me the uh, decimal number back again right so you can see two function here the first one is like get binary representation and the second one is get integer from binary right so i'm using i'm missing some indentation here now it's okay okay so now you can see here how i'm converting the number to binary form and to back decimal form again right talking about the complexity of this code so you can see that i have three loops here this loop is going to run o of 31 times right and this loop is o of log 2 log n and this is again in the range from l to r right so this is o of r minus l okay so this is how i am solving the problem using the brute force approach and i am using some extra space as well right so the complexity will be uh, first of all talking about the time complexity so time complexity will be o of uh, 32 right and the space complexity will be uh, o of 32 again you can see that we are using two list here and for the time complexity i am writing of 32 because even this particular range from r to l is going to lie in the interval from 1 to 31 right as given in the problem so this is about the brute force approach you can see that the problem with the brute force approach is i am using a number of loops here right uh, multiple loops here but we can solve the problem in a single loop as well let's see the optimal approach now Okay, so let me write optimal approach here. Okay, so here uh, the task is quite simple, but first of all, let me copy the given example. So I'm simply going to copy this example and paste it over here. So this is the example that we have, and the second approach says that uh, instead of converting the number into their binary and decimal form just what we can do is we can simply uh, check whether the bit is set or not without any conversion so how we can do this this is the first step first step is to check check uh, whether whether current bit is set right this is the first step uh, and the second step is to set the bit in x right if the bit is set if bit is set okay so if i write this approach then this approach will be something like 4 uh, like i equals to l and then i is smaller than r then i plus plus right this is like traversing the range and inside this i have to check if bit is set bit is set because I am uh, currently in the range, so I don't have to check whether I am in the range or not. So I'll simply traverse in the range and then I'll check bit is set. If the bit is set, then uh, set bit in X also, right? Okay, so we have to talk about these two particular things. Let me start with the first thing, whether uh, checking whether the bit is set. So in order to check whether bit is set uh, let me write an example so let's say i have a number which is 101100 right i have this particular number and i want to check whether this particular bit is set or not right so this particular bit is the ith bit let's say okay so in order to check this particular bit what i'll do is i'll write another number and this number is like this you can see here i have written all bit as zero right uh just one bit is set to one which is the ith bit okay and now when i perform end operation between these two numbers so this is the number n and this is the number that i have taken right so if i perform the end operation between these two numbers then all bits are gonna be unset right all bits will become unset why because i have one bit as zero and whenever we perform end operation between any number i and 0 any number x and 0 then it gives me 0 right so this is how all number will become 0 but what about this particular number 
this particular number will become zero or not totally depends on this particular bit if the bit is set then this number will not become zero right you can see here but let's say this particular bit is not set so if i have example like 1001 0, 0, 1, and i have 1000 0, 0, 0. i have to check this bit right so you can see that after performing end operation all bits will become zero right so this is the concept that we can use to uh, check whether the number uh, like whether a particular bit is set or not right how all we need to do is we need to know or uh, we need to find this particular numbers right so this number is nothing but one left shift i times isn't it so let's say I have 0, 0, 0, 0, 0001. This is binary form of 1, right? All I need to do is I need to left shift this number i times, right? So I can do this. I can simply write 1 left shift i times, right? This is what I need to write. And I have to perform the end of this operation with the number n, right? And once I have performed this particular operation, then I'll check whether my resultant number is equal to 0 or not. If this is not equal to 0, if this is not equal to 0, like in this case, you can see that the number is not equal to 0, right? The number is something greater than 0. I'll not say it is 1 because the 1 is present here. So it will be like something 2 raised to the power something, right? 2 raised to the power i. So, but this number is surely not 0. This is something which is not equal to 0. So I can say that the bit is set. This is how we check a set bit in a number, right? So now, I can modify the code. I can modify the code. I can simply do one thing here. As we are given the number y instead of n. So I'll write y and 1 left. Okay. So I need to write 1, right? 1 left shift i minus 1 times is not equal to 0. Okay. Yes. Why i minus 1 here? This is the question. i minus 1 because this l and r are following one based indexing, right? And we have to write here i based on zero based indexing. So here i is following zero based indexing. That why that's why I need to do i minus one, right? Okay. Now the question is how to set the bit in x. This is the question. Okay. So now let me explain this particular thing. How to set the bit in x. So the concept is very similar to checking the ith bit. The only difference is of operation right so let's say i have a bit 1000100101 right this is the number that we have and i want to set this particular bit this is the i bit right i want to set it how to set it all i need to do is i'll write a number which is like this one and now as you know that this number is nothing but one left shift i times right this number is one left shift i times so how I can set this particular bit? I just need to perform the OR operation, right? And when I perform the OR operation, then this particular operation will give me 1, right? So this is how I can set any particular bit. So as this particular bit is already set, so, okay, not set. So let's say if this is the bit and I want to set this bit. So I'll write 1 here and 1, 1 is again going to give me 1. This is how OR operation works. So I'll do or operation between these two numbers and all numbers are going to remain same right this is how or operation works and just there will be a change in this particular bit so this will now become one so let me write this particular thing as well i'll simply uh, write here that x equals to x or this is sign for bitwise or operation right and then i'll write uh, one left shift i minus one times so this is how this is how we can get the modified value of x when this particular loop complete so at last i just need to return x now you can see that we have optimized this particular uh, code a lot right because uh, in the previous approach we were using three different loops but now we are solving the same problem in just one loops and using the bitwise operators right so i hope you guys will like the explanation talking about the time complexity so it is again o of r minus l and space complexity is of 1 now, right? So this is all about this video. Okay, let me show you the code now. So before signing off, let me show you the code. So I have the C++ code here and the Java code here. And you can see that the C++ code and the Java code is exactly the same, right? But talking about the Python code, so there is just a difference of syntax here. And the logic is going to remain same, right? So now this is all about this video. Thank you.